Hello Davis Dudes and Dolls, I'm Caricature, and welcome back to my double down, double dipping, and double trouble little review show, Very Slay, where we go over each and every main stage runway look on Drag Race Down Under, season four. Y'all, this day brought me two things I never expected. One, me wearing nails. That's not normal, but I'm not mad at it. I kind of enjoy it. I kind of feel extra pussy with them, you know? I could get used to this if they would just stay on. <laughs> and the other thing I didn't expect was that this premiere was actually, like, really good. I think that really, there's one storyline that could get stale that will be over in my review on Patreon, which you can access by joining as a free member. In general, this was such a breath of fresh air. I think Down Under is gonna be better with RuPaul not hosting it. You can tell Michelle loves the queens and she engages with them actively. She's not reading to a camera like a lot of the hosts are. It feels so authentic. And then on top of that, it's a great cast. I love the dynamic of a lot of the girls. And then on top of that even more, I love the fact there's a rotating judge slot for the three winners with other people from Drag Race coming in and guesting with some other celebrities. We got Sasha Colby as a guest judge on Drag Race and she looked incredible. Honestly, if I could give my slay of the day to a look that wasn't competing, to a look that wasn't from the cast, that might be it. That might have taken it for this episode for me. I loved it, it was so good, so, so good. More on that over on the Patreon though. So again, check the link in the description below to join for free. But if you wanna support the artwork and that content, everything else coming out, every support, any dollar you wanna throw my way, any pledge you want to make helps so, so much in keeping the content coming. If you want to keep it coming but can't support that way, you can always join the caravan by liking, commenting, subscribing, all of those lovely little things. It's all just as appreciated and it goes so, so far in helping this content get to the next level. You watching out there. I'm just saying, it's a free thing. It costs you nothing. It takes like two seconds of your time to get more beauty like this in your subscription feed. Say less, Diva. But I won't, because it's my channel and I don't shut up. Let's talk about how the show works when we get into these looks because there are so many. Again, WOW is trying to kill me with these full cast multiple look episodes. Entrances will be in my Patreon discussion post, so those will not be talked about here. We're strictly doing the runway. We have Double Dressin', a two-in-one reveal look that called for a drastic change in looks, and Double Dipping, a monochromatic look that was a predetermined color chosen by production that was done in pairs with other queens in the cap. I think what I'm going to do for these looks is talk about the individual look that they did for the reveal for each of the pairs, and then we'll talk about their color look with the two together, and then we'll just do it that way. I think that makes the most sense. So without further delay, this is how the show works. If I thought that the look was good, got the job done, but I wasn't fascinated by it, we give it an okay. If I absolutely adored it, we give it a big ol' slay. And if I thought the look was just a gnar, a big old gnar, we give it an A. And that's all in efforts to find my weekly slay of the day. My favorite look of the episode, which will go head to head against Nikita Amon's promo look for my slay of the season. Whichever look holds that title, once we've crowned a new down under drag superstar, I will be illustrating. And those illustrations and any other art that I'm working on, including a lovely little illustration of Marina Summers that is looking oh so gorgeous so far, if I do say so myself. That can all be found over on the Patreon. Once you join at the $3 tier level, you gotta hand over a little bit if you wanted that type of content. But now that that is out of the way, let's switch over and talk about all of these looks. Huzzah! Alrighty, first up, we have Mandy Moves from The Blue Pair. Her two-in-one reveal look here, she starts off with stage curtains and then she becomes the stage performer in this gown. It's two drastic looks. I think she had one of the more drastic reveals between everything, but that being said, I did not like this first dress that much. I've seen this concept done a lot better. What I really did not like about this was the gown underneath. It's just a simple basic sequin gown and it wasn't the most flattering fit for her, I thought. I thought it looked a little baggy. Was not great, in my opinion. I think it was successful in meeting the brief of the challenge, so I'm gonna give it an okay, but I was very whelmed. I want to be overwhelmed with gorgeousness and beauty. Her blue look, I thought it was kind of the same thing. I thought it was fine. I thought it was grand because of the coat. The hair was decent. I thought it looked nice. And then it's another sequin gown. A better sequin gown than the first one she wore. That's for damn sure. But other than that, I just wasn't crazy about her looks. And I was kind of disappointed by them. But I love her. I love her a lot. And I hope she does 
so much better going forward. So for me, this look is also going to be an okay. Her partner is Lucina Innocence. So let's start off with her reveal look. Where was the reveal? For one thing, it was just she took the dress off the earrings and then was draped differently. That was the reveal. That's not two drastically different looks. That's the same look being worn slightly differently. She completely missed it. The colors don't go together for me either. I hate this mustard yellow with this like pink bodysuit and this pastel bluish mint hair. Like, it just made no sense to me, aesthetically. It didn't go. This is a nay. A big, big nay. Huge, even. Then we have her blue look, and I think Mandy clearly smoked her in this regard because this is just a little performance outfit, and the shoulders just go straight up, and they're not even, like, on the ends. They're, like, in the middle. It's, it's such a vertical design, and she's so tall that I think she needed, like, width. She needed some scale, and she didn't have any of it. The hair was cute. I liked the makeup, but I thought her bottom two placement in this episode was very, very well deserved. And she is so lucky that they didn't eliminate anyone this week because she got ate up in that lip sync. It's an A. <laughs> Next, from the red pair, we have Carnivore. Her first look, this very Grace Jones superhero moment. I like it. I like the hair. I like the reveal part of it. I liked the bodysuit with the skirt cape thing. The first part of it was fine, but once again, I wasn't like wowed by the reveal. It's gonna be an okay. Her second look, her red look. I completely agreed with the critiques that it was two separate things. I liked the red makeup. I thought that was really clean, looked really nice. The bodysuit was cute. It was a nice performance outfit. It served her well in the lip sync. But the Demogorgon thing, I just don't think that was necessary. I think she kind of just threw it on there so it wasn't just a dance costume. It's a miss for me as well. I'm going to give this a nick too. Then we had her partner, Miss Brenda Breast, who I thought was significantly older than 24. Ho oh, ho. I was in for a surprise when I found that out because she paints like she's 44. Nothing wrong with being a camp diva, but my gosh, this paint ages her up so fast. But it's a clean paint. I quite like it a lot. Her first look here, this pink gown where she pulls the pin and then she's a showgirl. I loved the gown. I loved the little fringe she dressed underneath. I thought the proportions were great on all of it. I thought she looked gorgeous. It's a sleigh. And even her red look. I thought was really nice. It's more showgirly, which I think it was gonna get kind of tired if we see it a lot. But at the same time, I wasn't upset with it. I thought it looked really nice. I liked that there was black to kind of break up the red. The feathers were placed well. I liked the hair. I liked her makeup here too. I thought it was just ever so slightly different and still looked really gorgeous. I really liked the lip in particular on the second look. This is also gonna be a sleigh for me. Then we had the gold pair. Starting us off, we had Freya Armani. This first look, awful. I hated it. Like, it's so bulky in the wrong ways. I think she tried something and it didn't work. And then the reveal wasn't clean because, my gosh, that suit was just dangling. The dress underneath is cute. I liked the dress underneath. That first part is just so bad to me. I'm going to give this an okay. Her second look, this corset with the little fur moment, that train, that coat, Gorgeous. Loved the hair. Loved the gold blush. This was stunning. Like, I loved it. I thought it was really, really well executed. There was something about- there was something about that corset piece that kind of gave me the Ice Princess from Batman Returns. You know, the one who falls from the roof. It's that kind of silhouette. Very busty, very cinched. I liked it a lot. I thought this was really strong. Arguably, I think them as a pair, they were the strongest collective pair. I thought both of these looks were great. Then, let's talk about Max. Max Drag Queen's first look, very bendy or went into the Crocodile Hunter. I thought this was really great, and I thought her going from a two-piece jacket and pant, really cute pant, I loved the pants actually, and then the coat jacket situation into the dress, gorgeous. It looked almost like it was one piece, like a jumpsuit, but it's sectioned off to look like separates. And if that's the case, that's really immaculately well done design. The reveal look underneath the crocodile skin dress, it's very cute. I like the hair a lot. I thought this was really well executed. It's a sleigh. I loved even more though, her gold look. This gladiator moment, the drape of the skirt, gorgeous. She sold the hell out of it. This for me is one of the strongest looks of the night. This is hands down a sleigh. Then we have the purple pair. Starting us off, we have Olivia Dreams. And by golly, she looked so nervous. So, so nervous. Understandable. You can't let it show. And she really did. 
this first look, she kind of had a similar idea conceptually to Max, but I think Max did it a lot better. It was just a cleaner overall presentation. I did not like the top part of Olivia's outfit as much. It was more of like a khaki poncho, and then she revealed into a cheetah print dress that had a cheetah face on the tummy and then a tail. The dress underneath that I didn't like. I didn't care for the hair either with the vines. It was a little too poison ivy for me. With the concept, I don't think it really worked as well as it could have. So I'm gonna give this look a nay. Her second look, this gown is gorgeous, but it's not fitted for her. I thought the hair was nice. I thought this was definitely her strongest look, but personally, I don't know how she's gonna do in this competition because the nerves are so, so present. I don't know if she's gonna be able to shake them off next week, and next week is a girl group challenge. So like, you gotta be confident. You gotta have the, the oomph. I don't think she has the oomph yet. You're gonna be oomph, Livia Dreams. This look for me is gonna be an okay. Then we have Lazy Susan, our first challenge winner of the season. I love this diva. She's so demented in the best way. This first look, this reveal look, where she doesn't do anything for the reveal, but turn around. And all it is is that turn that completely changes the presentation of the character. Her being in this like full head to toe, very like babushka, Russian nesting doll energy for me look with a muff. And then like the little fake face. And then she turns around, she got sharp teeth and black eyes. It's creepy. I was into it. This was a slay. What I loved even more though was her purple look. This all floral print fantasy. Ah, ah, I loved it so much. It was so good. All the attention to detail. That's what I loved about this because the makeup was floral print. Everything was in that purple and lavender tone. All the things in her grocery bag. The grocery bag was also in the floral print. Like everything was floral print and everything was just like soft and delicate, but so well constructed. It's not the most mind-blowing silhouette, but you don't have to do a mind-blowing silhouette if you put together a look that is this clean and this like concept with said silhouette. This is a million times over a slide. And then we have our final group. We have Nikita Iman up first. I loved, loved her first looks. I loved this Samoan energy. She looked very much like an island goddess. I adored it. I loved the sense of poise and elegance she carried herself on the runway too. You could definitely tell she's the ballroom girl because she has that like level of poise that comes with a lot of face girls. This is gonna be a slay for me. Her second look is a swimsuit with a crochet cover up. A very nice crochet cover up, but that's it. I loved from here up, the rest of it, the performance sold it a little bit more for me, but I just didn't care for it that much. I'm gonna give it an okay. And finally, we have Vibe and her two-in-one look, also giving us a little floral moment, very American beauty. I thought the silhouette at the beginning of it was cool. I could kind of tell it was gonna like flip up just based on the way she was carrying it and just the cut of the dress. It definitely did look like a prolapse. Uh, I liked the red roses underneath. I liked the red hair. I thought it was really cute and really darling. I liked the tribute to American Beauty. I don't know. There's something about it that just wasn't fully there for me. It's gonna be an okay. What is more than an okay though was her orange look because she went literal with orange slices and the fact that she made a defined silhouette with an asymmetrical bust line, hemline, and did a shape pattern that allowed her to create a waist. Like this is a genius design and it's so simple but so effective. I thought it was so glamorous and it's so campy. I adored it. It is a slay for me. And that is it for this episode and it's now time to pick my slay of the day, my favorite look of the week. Now, we had a lot of options here. Realistically, there were 20 to pick from, but I think the look that really sealed the deal for me and cemented the win, in my opinion, was from Lazy Susan, and it was her little purple moment. I loved it. It was so clean. So, so well done. And now it's time to put this look up against our slate of the season so far from Nikita Iman in the promo. Real, real big toughie for me. But I think I'm gonna give it to Lazy Susan, actually. I think I'm gonna put that one going forward. I love drawing florals. I love purples. I love this color palette. And I think there could be some fun details here and some fun art to be made with this. So we'll see what comes next. Something will probably surpass it. We'll just have to find out in a future episode of this little program. Now, Again, as always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe all those lovely little things for even more Drag Race fashion coverage in your subscription feeds. But until next time, we will meet again in the future. We'll see you sometime soon, I'm sure. 
Be sure though to go out there, stay kind, stay queer, and make sure that your day is very slay.